Not what I wanted, but it's something. As a child, I was fascinated by the visualizations of Windows Media Player and screensavers. Last year, I stumbled across the term generative art, running code with random values to get a visually different result each time. I'll often see some of my feed and go, wow, I wanna learn how to do that. Then I'll keep scrolling. So for the next month, I plan to spend one hour each day until a total of 24 hours to see what will happen if I just try. I've never seen anything like that in my life. My favorite type of generative art is flow fields. An essay by Tyler Hobbs notes the use of a Java library known as processing. And if that's how he gets these stunning results, we'll start here. After reading about the physics and forces behind flow fields in the nature of code by Dan Schiffman and trying to follow his tutorial but not understanding majority of the terms, I ended up just pinching some code from online and played with that for an hour. So it's been like over a week and I haven't done any learning on processing. I'm very ambitious and it's very easy for me to set the goals too high and then become discouraged when I realize that there's a mountain of work. So I really got to dial it back and just learn the basics. So this morning I spent some time just playing with lines, random loops. It took a lot to get just even just basic stuff like a gap right. I feel a bit more re-energized. I was very doubtful last week. I think just because I was like, this is way too hard. If I dial it back to something easier and build back up again from that. I was going through my university files from 2013. Turns out I was writing Java. Well, I've written Java since then, so I think moving to JavaScript. I've got my bass shaker chair plugged in, so when I hit play on that, it's just like a filthy bass side range. It's like clipping it. Oh, when I move the mouse around, I want to make it take my speaker input. Microphone inputs, same, same, really. Whoa. Yeah, spectrum visualization. That's very basic code. Okay, bull. Okay, bull. Aha. So, what if we make multiple? Yay. You're joining my mate. So, now we're sitting in the middle. When I speak, it's going to shrink. That's wrong. Now it's going to shrink. Hey, that's cool. Can we change hue? So start off with green and turn red when it gets too loud. Hey, hey, that's so cool. It doesn't even feel like learning, it's just fun. All right, now the visualizer reacts as a pie chart to the bass, the treble, different volumes of my voice. Hey, there's my hands. <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> Dude, that's like, that's Iron Man little stuff right there. Better like input and swipe around. Grab it, move my window around with my finger. You see this stuff? This is wild. Let's give this a crack. Click motion P5JS. Hit play. What I don't understand is how is it meant to like allow browser to talk to my hands? Download the latest Leap.js from our CDN. Clicks link. No. Is it just that? Like I've installed Gemini. That's what's installed. API reference, that's nice. Leap JavaScript plugins. Everything leads back to the same spot. I load up a demo and it says here, yeah, WebSocket not connected. That's where I need to look. I tried different browsers, multiple JavaScript libraries, I even tried running my own virtual server. I don't know how to do this thing. I paused the timer as I spent days troubleshooting this WebSocket issue until one perfectly worded Google search struck gold. June 2022. Hey, we're not currently supporting this. Nah, bruh. How many hours over how many days? They should add at the freaking top here. Warning, none of this would work if you've installed our latest software. Download it. Let's go, baby! I just want this, this little widget to be able to control the sound. So let's figure out how to join those two together and then I can be done with this and delete it all and never look at it ever again. <laughs> so I want the hand to be the input for this. I need to pinch this here. Leap motion data. Okay, my hand's moving around. We are at the point. I'm so excited. So hand X is now gonna replace mouse X. Hand Y will replace mouse Y. 
that may be it. Alright, no, we need a bowl. Do we still have it? We do. Yes. A little bit of water in this. Just enough water to cover it all. Alright, whack it on the chair. So need to backlight it. A little bit less water, maybe. Oh, this is sick. All right, we've now got a spotlight set up. Better ripple viewing. Oh my God, what the hell? I've never seen anything like that in my life. All right, we're rolling on um, camera here. Sink. Oh, there's our first couple ripples. Second level ripple, it's starting to resonate. Oh, it's gone. What the heck? Bro, what are these patterns? Ah, and that's my hand. My goal is to try and make something that has a repeating pattern. So it draws like a circle, draw a square and then move it in a direction. Oh, that's cool, man. And then kind of randomize that movement. I have no idea what's even going on. Let's do 400 squares. Here we go. Ooh. Man, that simple change. I got more comfortable with aligning cubes to a grid and then shifting their placement, changing their size, and then stretching them to varying lengths. It still blows me away how minimal the code is. I then found a tutorial on a grid of lines where you randomize the angle. And by increasing the chance of one direction, you get an interesting result. Let recursion by putting circles beside each other, inside each other, every second one lower than each other, then randomly to the side of each other. I'm really digging this circular recursion. So I want to see if I can write code to make it not go off the screen. If X and Y position. Now if the position of Y, the Y could be zero. So if the circle, that don't make much sense to me. Canvas height minus, I think it's honestly just got to be two things. Is not larger than the height, no, just not larger than D divided by two. This is some futuristic stuff. To me, very space-like. You could slap that on a spaceship HUD. Today I was feeling like, I'm gonna get nothing good out of this. And I know it's just a bunch of circles, but they look so freaking cool. Gosh, I'm feeling tired. It's 6.40. Um, I wanna try and make like a topography flying map thing. Just look at the screen, bro, it's what it looks like. <laughs> I don't know what we call this stuff. So what I should have so far, if things are working right, is a, a, a perfect grid. So this is a good sign. Um, yeah, no, it's not fam. Oh my goodness. A little bit of code, and you get bam. Freaking terrain in 3D. Let's change some colors, I guess. I just got the, the blob moving. I found a tutorial on how to make a sphere from points, and I changed the input from sliders to my microphone. Wow, that's super cool. You get stuck for freaking like half an hour, but you pursue. Openprocessing.org. This website's just full of some incredible stuff. Whoa, are you kidding me? Dissecting this person's code and then making it my own now. All right, so we're drawing lines. Cool. Random dot between where it was before and a random dot between where it is now. Break. Is it break that they use in JavaScript? Hey, it is. There's no errors. I title this one, um, writing. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna learn, we're gonna learn truncate tiles. Let's see what Google, how does Google pronounce it? Truche. <laughs> Dude, what? It's way more fancy than I thought. Truche. This is sick. Get this, and I've got this first if statement. Steve's make a space, you've given me the answer. I really like how he was able to use these like multiple ifs to decide what gets drawn. It's just very smart. Ooh, look at this. Alphabet soup. <laughs> so I want to go all the way across the top, making triangles. Oh, that's something. Not what I wanted, but it's something. <laughs> That's weakening my eyes out a bit. Make bigger triangles. Like that's a pretty cool little thing. I want to do something with ASCII. I don't like rounded. I want like like straight edge stuff. 
Oh, nerdy ads. I might add some randomness into the height. Oh, that's really just stuffed it up. That's nice. I still feel anxious to try and figure this one out, but a lot less than when I started this challenge 24 hours ago. If it looks anything like a river, I'm happy. Oi, Schiffman's back. That's right, we're doing the tutorial I failed on day one. We need a grid of lines, random angle of rotation, use Perla noise to smooth out the randomness, allow the angle to change over time, create a bunch of particles that can float around, generate forces based on the angle of the line and apply this to our particle when it travels over it, remove the grid of lines and then finally record each particle's movements. The crazy thing is it actually makes sense. I get how it's working. That's the cool thing. Watching each little particle just flow along and draw out its path, like, that's incredible. If I'm being honest, I was a bit nervous to post this feed because I'm not a pro at this stuff. But then I think about anyone, like everyone starts somewhere. And if we wait until we're great to do something, then we'll never do it. Even with the coding, it took me a three year uni degree to understand syntax and languages before I could now just pick up JavaScript and run with it. With internet full of success stories and highlights, we miss the trials and struggles of the learning stages. And that's life, the real reality, the failures, wasting days trying to find drivers. Although the 24 hours will be longer than I'd hoped, I've now got a base understanding to use as a launch pad to integrate creative coding into future projects. If you want to see those, subscribe. If you want to watch me make my first smart device, click up here and comment down below what you're going to learn in the next 24 hours. See ya. Bye. I did it, man. I did it.